Hi everybody and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today we are going to be making something that I thoroughly love to eat. We're going to make a shepherd's pie but we're going to do it carb friendly. We're going to, uh, I'll show you how we get that in just a few minutes. We're going to have some lemony Brussels sprouts on the side and a berry crisp for dessert. So, and it's all low carb, so it's going to be great. I have over here a pot of water that I've brought to a boil and I have a pan, uh, a nonstick skillet that I'm browning two pounds of very lean ground beef. I'm using 9010 because that's all my store had. I have one onion that I'm actually going to chop in my food processor because I don't want big chunks of onion, but I want the flavor of the onion. So this is a great way to sneak veggies in your food and somebody who's not an onion lover won't know that it's in there because we're gonna pulse it very, very fine. This is just a mini uh, food chopper. If I can, there we go. I love this thing. It's a KitchenAid brand. I get asked all the time about the brands of things that I cook with. I love KitchenAid appliances, I just do. I've, I've used them for years. I have a food processor at home that I got as a gift when Mike and I got married 26 years ago. Still going strong. So they really do last. Now I'm just gonna add the pureed onion straight into my pan. Let me get a, this will be a little better. Okay, we're just gonna saute this with the beef. Now because I'm using very, very lean ground beef, um, I probably won't need to drain mine. Uh, let me stir that up, see if we need any more onion. I'm not sure that we will. You don't wanna do too, too much. Yeah, I think I will. I think I'll just go ahead. What am I gonna do with a quarter of an onion? So, my little mini food chopper though does come in very handy for different, different things. If you don't have one of these, you could absolutely just pulse it very, very fine. That would work too, hey, either way. Oh, come on you. All righty, let's just go ahead and put the rest of the onion in there. I love shepherd's pie. I've been making this dish for years, years and years. My mom made it. I actually taught her how to make it. This one was one I taught her how to make. But I have changed a few things since my original recipe to um, make it a little more carb friendly. That steam from that pan is completely fogging up my glasses here. All right, we're just gonna let that go for a minute. Now I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm going to add some paprika. I'm gonna add some celery seed. And I'm gonna add, um, it's called Aleppo pepper, A-L-E-P-P-O, I believe is how you spell it. If you don't have this, you could add some crushed red pepper. Um, this is not hot and spicy. It just adds a very rich flavor. I love it. It's kind of a newfound discovery for me is the Aleppo pepper flakes. And oh, they're so good. You can find them anywhere in any store that sells spices. Smells divine. I'm also gonna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, about half a teaspoon of each. Stir that up because you know I like to put the spices in the pan before I put any liquid in there because it blooms the spices and brings out the flavors. Really does make a difference. Now, I am going to add this is a 14 or 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. I have two cans because I don't know how soft this is gonna be. 
So let's just see where we are. Mm, I don't know. Let me see here. I don't want it soupy, but I do want it a little bit moister than this. So I'm going to add about half of this, and I'll just save the rest of this for something else. Just put it in a container and put it in your fridge. I use tomato sauce all the time. All right. Now that just needs to simmer for just a few minutes while we make the topping to go on that. Let me get rid of my food processor here. Now for the topping, you are going to need some cauliflower. Now, traditionally, and I know for those of you out there who are, um, you know, uh, either Scottish or Irish, I know this is not authentic shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie authentically is made with lamb, ground lamb. But here in the United States, we, or at least where I live, you have a hard time finding lamb. And honestly, I'm not a favor of lamb. I fa I'm not a fan of lamb. So I'm using ground beef. So technically, I guess it would be called cottage pie. But anyway, I have two bags of just riced cauliflower that I buy at the grocery store. I keep it in my freezer at all times because I use this for so many different things. Now, if you don't have the riced cauliflower, you can take a head of cauliflower, uh, chop it into um, little fine pieces, pulse it in a food processor, and it'll make the riced cauliflower. But the frozen is so convenient, and honestly, it is very good. So I just use it. Let me do this. I will need some butter and some salt and some heavy cream. Let me get a little fork here, it'll be fine. I'm going to add about probably a, a teaspoon of salt. All right. And I don't know, three or four tablespoons of butter because, I mean, butter makes everything taste good. You will also need some heavy cream which I forgot to get out of my refrigerator. I always shake it up. Now I'm making this low carb, so I'm using heavy cream. If you don't have any heavy cream, you could use half and half, but know that you're gonna have a few more carbs in there. Don't put too much heavy cream, maybe a fourth of a cup. And for the cauliflower, you will need either a food processor, a blender, or one of these, which this is an immersion blender, and I love this tool for my kitchen. I use it for so many different things, but you just put it in there, and you will pulse this cauliflower. I like to pulse it and get it kind of started. And then just take your immersion blender and keep going until your cauliflower is smooth. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm just going to keep pulsing this up. And when I come back, I'll show you how to finish up the shepherd's pie. And we will get started on dessert. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, let's get all of this combined. All I did was finish making that creamy. 
We're going to take our base, which is our ground beef, and we're going to pour that into our casserole dish. Kind of smooth that out. Oh, that looks so good. Then we're going to take our mashed cauliflower and we're going to, I like to just kind of dot it over a few places and then smooth it out. I love mashed cauliflower. If you are new to the low carb way of eating and you're, you know, unsure about mashed cauliflower, try it. It really is very good. Okay, spread it out like you would mashed potatoes, which is, you know, my original recipe, of course, uses mashed potatoes, but we're making this low carb. And then I'm going to top it with some cheese. Now, this is Colby Jack, but you could use cheddar. Uh, you could use Gruyere. You can use any kind of cheese that you like that melts. And I want about a cup. Not too, too much, but enough. And then I'm going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so until the cheese melts and everything, because everything's cooked. We're just, you know, putting it in there to let the cheese melt. So we'll put it in the middle of the oven. About 20 minutes or so is all you need. Now let's get the Brussels sprouts steaming. Clean up my mess here. I have some fresh Brussels sprouts. I have a pan of water that has come to a boil. Now I'm using a basket, just like a pasta pot, but you could use a steamer, um, you know, anything like that that you have. I have fresh Brussels sprouts here. Now I've done a few of them, but I wanted to show you what how you need to do them. This is just a bag of fresh Brussels sprouts. I washed them. You want to trim the very bottom off and then any loose leaves, and it's okay if, you know, a couple of loose leaves come out, that's okay. But trim that bottom off, but don't take all of that core because that's what's holding this together. And any leaves that look like they need to come off, just go ahead and take them off. Something fell back there, but that's all right. Oh, one of my lights fell off. Okay, well, we have a dot bit dark back there, but it's okay. Now, if you have any little spots like that, just trim them off. I love Brussels sprouts. If you have only had Brussels sprouts boiled to death, you haven't had Brussels sprouts because those are nasty. But Brussels sprouts steamed, and then we're going to saute them are delicious and roasted oh my goodness they are so good roasted these are small brussels sprouts which is what i actually prefer if you only have really really big ones then um you'll, you might want to cut them in half we're going to steam these in just with just water nothing else for about five minutes or so i don't want them uh, too, too, too soft because we're going to saute them also. So we're just going to let those go for about five minutes. So somebody will set me a timer for five minutes. And then I'll show you how we're going to finish those. Clean up my stove here. All righty. Now, we're going to make a berry crisp, which is delicious. And you can have berries if you're eating a low-carb, keto, diabetic, however you want to word it. You can eat berries. Let me grab all my stuff here. I have here some beautiful strawberries and blackberries. Look at these blackberries. I have been nibbling on these. Look at them, how beautiful they are. They're so big. Look at that. And juicy and good and sweet. That, this is what I chose. If you want to use blueberries, go ahead. If you wanted to use all, let me get my skillet back on. 
Um, if you wanted to use all of one fruit, you can. If you wanted to use a mixture of strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, and blueberries, whatever you want. But you want a couple of cups or so of the fruit. Mm, so good. Now, I'm going to actually cook these a little bit before I put them in the oven the top, with the topping. So I have here a skillet on medium-ish heat. And I'm going to add my berries. I've washed these. I can't help myself. <clears throat> I'm going to leave a couple of these out because I'm eating them. Look at the size of this blackberry. That thing is huge. Look at that in my hand. It's so big, but these are so good. The blackberries lately have just been, look at that, as opposed to a, well, that one's big too. This is probably a normal size blackberry. Look at the difference in that size. But they're so good. The blackberries lately have just been delicious. I'm also going to add some strawberries because I love strawberries. All right, oh, one left. Put him in there. We are going to add some liquid stevia to this. Not much, what the equivalent, equivalent of maybe 10 drops, because honestly, it doesn't need that much. Let me get a, a little thing here. I'm not cooking these down like I, if I was going to be making jam. I just want to soften them a little bit. I am going to add a pinch and I mean a pinch of salt just to bring out the sweetness, literally less than an eighth of a teaspoon. Just look at that beautiful, beautiful texture there or colors. All right, now we're going to make the topping for our crisp. Excuse me. Oh, goodness. I have a food processor here. Again, this is a KitchenAid because that's what I like. And we're going to make the topping for our crisp. You will need the chopper blade. You know, your food, pro <coughs> excuse me, your food processors come with different blades. This is just the chopping blade. We're going to add to this some almonds and pecans. If you have walnuts, you could use that. I mean, you really can just mix it up however you want. We're going to pulse these. We're not going to make butter out of this. We're just going to pulse it a few times just to chop them up even finer. All right. That's good. Let's check our berries here. I don't want these to do anything but soften. And oh, I wish you could smell this. It smells so, so good. All right, I'm going to just stir these for a minute. I'm not going to do anything over there. And when we come back, I'm going to show you how to finish this off and finish off our Brussels sprouts. And our um, shepherd's pie will be done. I'll be back in just a minute. All I did was just take that off the heat. Our berries are done. So let's put them in the bottom of our baking dish. Now, I want you to see they're not mushy. They're just softened a little bit, which is exactly what you want. You do not want these cooked down to a pulp. That's not at all what we want. Be sure you get all those juices out of there. 
That's part of the deliciousness of it all. Look at that, how pretty that looks. Let's get this over here. Things get full. Now, back to our nuts. We're going to add a little bit of butter. I'm going to cut this in half. Well, I may just cut it a couple tablespoons. We're making a topping is what we're doing. We're also going to add a little bit of cinnamon and a little bit of um, just a granulated no sugar sweet replacement, I, I, erythritol, Splenda, something like that, a sugar replacement. Whatever kind you like is fine. You could use powdered or granulated, either one. You will need your broiler on. We're just going to pulse that together just to kind of make a good crisp topping. Not too, too much. That's perfect. All right. We will take our topping. Let me get rid of this. Bring this over to here. And I'm going to lightly stir that together. And I'm just going to sprinkle this over top. Oh, my goodness. This would be delicious on anything, I'm telling you. You know how in traditional berry crisps they use oats? Well, the nuts kind of mimic that texture because oats are not low carb. All right. Doesn't that look delicious? Oh, my goodness. I just want to eat that right now. And I'm going to in a few minutes. All right. So let's get our berry crisp under the broiler for literally uh, about three minutes, four minutes, four minutes or so. Somebody set me a timer. And we'll put this in the, uh, uh, under the broiler for about four minutes. All right. Check on our shepherd's pie. That's looking great. Now, let's get our meal finished. Remember those Brussels sprouts that we steamed? We're going to put a large skillet over medium heat, or medium high heat, excuse me. Add a touch of olive oil. Could add a little butter, and I've got just a little knob left. I think I'll just go ahead and use it. You don't have to use the butter if you don't want to, but, I mean, it's butter. Tastes great. Adds flavor. And we're going to saute some red pepper flakes, salt and pepper, and garlic. Just a couple of cloves of garlic minced. This is just the pre-minced stuff. Not for long, just for about 30 seconds, if that. Oh, just to get that garlic going. Bring out the flavors of those red pepper flakes. Then we're going to add our steamed Brussels sprouts to that. And we're going to saute them for just a minute. I like to kind of let them go one layer. And then we're going to add in some fresh lemon juice. We'll let that go for just a second here. Now, these Brussels sprouts, what I want you to understand is these are not mushy. Let me get a, a little knife here, if I can find a little paring knife. Excuse me, because I want you to see that there's still some resistance there. They're not mushy. There's still a little bit of resistance. I'm going to eat one. Mm. I don't like my Brussels sprouts mushy. If you want them, I'm eating one. <laughs> if you wanted them a little bit softer, let them steam for just a couple minutes more. That's it. And then take your fresh lemon juice and squeeze over it. Adds that brightness and acidity. 
that's out of this world. Turn the heat off, and they're done. Let's get rid of our peels there. Get them off that heat. You don't want that garlic to burn. And there is the most delicious, easy Brussels sprouts. Now, you see, come in here. Let me show you how we've got some that have the little bit of caramelized edges. That's what you want. Oh, I cannot wait to dive into those. Yum, yum, yum. Alrighty, now everything is done. Here are our delicious Brussels sprouts. They are so good, I cannot wait for you to try these. I'm gonna actually sprinkle it with just a touch of a salt, finishing salt, and a little bit of pepper because I really like pepper, as you know by now. Love it, oh, so good. Then our wonderful shepherd's pie that we made with ground beef. Aleppo pepper flakes, and you find that in the spice aisle. If you don't, if you can't find that, you can use any kind of a chili flake or chili powder, um, something along those lines. Aleppo peppers are not hot. They just add a wonderful, almost a smoky, rich flavor. You could also use smoked paprika in here if you wanted a little smokier. But we used Aleppo pepper flakes, celery seed, and paprika, salt and pepper and a grated up onion in our base with some tomato sauce. Then we topped it with mashed cauliflower instead of mashed potatoes. Traditionally, shepherd's pie is made with lamb. We made it with beef, so it's really called cottage pie, but I've always called it shepherd's pie. It's topped with mashed potatoes, but we're eating low carb, so we used mashed cauliflower, just using frozen riced cauliflower which if you are eating low carb, should be a staple in your freezer. Um, you can get them at any grocery store. I buy mine at Sam's in a big bag that's got like four or five little serving bags of, cauliflower, of the riced cauliflower. And our wonderful berry crisp. Now, I do want to say, watch your timer. Everybody's oven is different. This broiler is hotter than the broiler I have at home in my home kitchen. So watch it. Start it in a minute. Watch it every 30 seconds or so until it gets golden and brown. And I just topped it with those remaining blackberries that I had because it just looks pretty. Can't wait to eat them. But there you go. A low-carb, easy-to-cook meal any day of the week. Start to finish 30 minutes and you've got dinner on the table. Thanks for joining with me and I'll see you next time on Everyday Manna.